250 kilometres to come. Instalment number two of the NTI Townsville 500, and we're into it. Great jump initially by Deep Esquale. Can he cover and move across on Waters, or is Waters going to sneak it back up the inside? Davison, though, has dropped the clutch beautifully. He's arguing the case, and I think he might have jumped into second. Van Gisbergen is sweeping in from the outside. It's going to be tied at two. Van Gisbergen has run out wide. He was lucky to get away with that. He was the widest car. So it looked like Davison was going to escort them out there, and he's lost more ground there. Scott Pye's been able to get by. Oh, they're all in. Scott Pye's been hit. He's actually turned right back around. Have they all missed him? That's an absolute miracle. Oh, Is that Davison or Deepa Squally? One of them straight in the fence. I think it's, yeah, it's uh, Will. So he was tangled in all that. There was contact on the exit of turn three. And he lives to fight another day and get that car out of there. But the Pye car is damaged again. And we've got into the circuit, please. Uh, James Courtney racing down the inside here with a yellow flag, but he spotted it now. So the safety car boards are out. Our timing monitor has gone yellow. And the BP Ultimate safety car is now out. So that's where the games commence. That's why Will was complaining that he ran him out there. But this is going to tell the story. So off turn three, Little bump, little bump, little bump against the fence, and then contact between Will and Scott turned the new line Commodore around. So did Scott bump off the top of the kerb and then the squeeze, or did the squeeze just occur naturally? So this is the view from Shane's car. So I Check spotted him and he was taking the wide approach, but that didn't work as soon as Will got the hip and shoulder from Cam and moved him across. So we're looking now at Scott Pye to the right from Shane Van Gisbergen's car. This might tell a bit more of the story. Scotty gets up there. Yeah, he did hit the kerb, and that's what fired it out there. And then there's no space on the left-hand side. It's actually smashed the left rear corner of the new long car as well. Gee, how lucky was the series leader not, not to get caught up in it? This is Mostert. So Chaz is trying to be racy on the outside of Shane, so he's going to give us a great view of this as well. There just was not space out there. All right, so we're going to go racing again in just a tick. So the order at the moment is Deeper Squally, Waters, Van Gisbergen, and Courtney Mostert. That's our top five. Will Davison's gone back out there and rejoined the group. And we're going to be missing in action Scott Pye. That car's on the flatbed truck and unfortunately heading back to the garage. We've got a green flag to get back underway once more. We've got 85 laps remaining when they cross the line this time. A long, long way to go. And that might set the tone of the day. I sense that it's going to be a very racy an argumentative afternoon. Waters has a peek down the inside. No room down there for him as Deep Pasquale covers. That's the whole field getting through that very trickily shaped turn two complex. Waters was aggressive straight away. He was having a little look. Uh, you might find that he's incentivized to do it down at 11 if he gets a good run. Does not need any more rear bumper damage, but he's getting a bit of it at the moment. Heimgartner up the inside of Brown. This could be messy when they get to the final corner. And Heimgartner has a look, gets the squeeze, and you've got to be so careful of steering damage when all that's going on. Look at that. It's a slab of supercars out of turn 13. And it's not over because the slipstream, Will Brown's got the slipstream on Jack LeBrock. Heimgartner's one back and one wide, so he's going to try to turn back in. And down the inside, there was going to be, when we get the next shot, there'll be cars spinning. Oh, how'd they get away with that? That was Jake Kostecki down the inside of the whole lot. Have a look at that for a gaggle of cars. It's the wacky races on the one run to turn three here. There's cars everywhere. Look at them trying to sort it out. They're just pushing and shoving and trying to sort their way. Meantime, Randall's gone to the lead over Deep Pasquale, but this is an unbelievable block of congestion at the moment. And you've got Macaulay Jones. <laughs> Mark Winterbottom getting a serve. Jake Kostecki as well. They're in the grass. They're in the gravel. They're on the curbs. Some of them are on the asphalt. Not many. Well, I think <laughs> oh, that was on Bianca and Old down there. They were playing for kicks. Right, the boys. Oh, I love that stuff. <laughs> McCauley Jones and James Golding at it here. Golding's car number 31 on the left side. The subway green entry. And McCauley's got the run through turn one. James up on the outside. It's about to be a three-way oh. fight. And that is Will Davison getting down the inside. Nicely done. And skittling both. Nicely done. Nice presence of mind. Lucky they didn't have the little fast food bump. 
between the Pizza Hut Commodore and the Subway Commodore. Oh, that was close again. That was really close to the way out of turn three. In fact, I think James just rested the front of the car on the back of McCauley's on the way down to turn five. Two compulsory stops in this race, so I think they're fat fueling Will okay, Davison. Putting a lot of fuel on, a little bit like what happened yesterday. Okay, okay. Van Gisbergen and Courtney now in as well. So Mostert's elevating up through the field. Thomas Randall's actually getting a decent run out of these tyres, MS. So Thomas's last lap was a 16.8, and he's now on the 29th lap in the cycle of these tyres. We need to see this now, and that's Anton Di Pasquale on the cold tyre. Shane's going to try to do the crisscross, and he does it. Has he got him? It's not quite done yet. And they are absolutely side by side, and then eventually Di Pasquale has to yield. Now Randall is in. He got 30 laps out of the tyres, Mark. That was a fine effort. He's been in now for 15 seconds. So that leaves Mostert in the lead. So they're playing a different game with Mostert. Feeney's come in now as well. Continued progress through the field for Nick Perkat. He's going to move up into second position here. Randall, his stop. Dunlop hard tyres at the ready. That is a strategic right, mistake by Shelby Power Racing today. That, straight up, is a massive mistake. Van Gisbergen hasn't got the supreme pace that he had yesterday versus the field. Anton had pace that was good enough. They needed to put enough fuel in to get out in front and leave him in front. So in terms of race craft, that team decision just there is a very poor one. Now, what will also be interesting is the waters in that fresh air zone that he's operating in at the moment is the second fastest car on the racetrack last time out. So look at the rejoin going on here. So you've got Randall covering down the inside. Van Gisbergen rounds him up. Deeper Squally is about to have a sniff here as well. And he makes it a desperate lunge out of turn two. Oh, and Randall covers him all the way to the fence, but there's not a lot of space here. Can he get up? He gets the squeeze on the curb side by side. And that's what happened earlier in the day with Davison and with Pye. And eventually Randall has to clear the throttle and drop back in behind. That was awkward. It was very awkward. And Anton was blowing up Deluxe over the radio. He said, do not do that to me again. He needs to just do it in a way that doesn't cost either of them too much pace. And that's exactly what he does. So actually Thomas is parked up on the inside. Very gentlemanly. He, he probably didn't need to do that to that extent. He's actually um, got good pace out there at the moment, Thomas Randall. Oh, oh, oh. Look at this. Whoa! And Thomas Randall, though he was kind to his teammate, he's not being kind at all here to Chaz Mostert. This is a little battle. And Chaz tries to sneak it down the inside. And this makes it the long way round at the next part of this racetrack. Gets it up and over the curve. And on it goes now when they get down to seven and eight. You know, I've been reliably informed that we're going to see a right-hand gear change again from Shane Van Gisberg, and he did that on Friday in practice. And, and uh, we thought it was a rarity. Well, not now. We've seen it twice. If we get another shot, as Jamie Winkup looks intently with Mark Dutton at the screen there and says to himself, why is he doing that with the right-hand gear change? But that's the way he operates inside the car he's very good at doing other things now what he does when he comes onto the straight he puts his left foot onto the throttle and gives that right foot a little reprieve which you would have done that at Bathurst did you do that at Bathurst no but it's making my eyes cross in the commentary box this description of crossing hands and feet yeah. no I didn't oh didn't you uh -huh. okay I used to always did that at Bathurst to give a right leg a little rest but what he's doing and he was doing it yesterday you might see him do it when we come onto the straight so he comes down this is now turn 11 brakes it nicely a couple of nice gear changes uses the engine braking nice modulation very easy and smooth on the steering wheel takes all the load off uses all the road balances it up brakes it turns it into the apex on the throttle gently Nice. Here he is. And that's a good decision by Shell V Power because you do not want him to get the benefit of the undercut on you. Nice cooperation between the teams there. They're able to drive through the Anton Di Pasquale or Shell V Power pit. 
So if it happened in our day, we'd have had to yeah, make you drive around, around it, wouldn't we? Yeah. Okay, so I was done. I think I'd be good to go. Getting close here, mate. Three seconds there now, mate. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. There was about a half second on advantage in favour of Shane coming into that stop. Davison now gets back that manoeuvre that Will Brown put on him just recently. And uh, the fastest lap of the race still for the moment is Thomas Randall, but we might see a bit of action in that regard shortly. Nick Perkat now also coming in. You just need to be careful. And there's, well, there's the numbers for you. So just on two laps alone there, 1.3 and 0.7, there's two seconds straight away in that last four laps. So that tells the story. Still a long way to go. D-Pat is currently lapping around 15.2. Keep it around that 15 for me. And managed to get the here we go, Mostert, and he gets chased to the inside of the road. They're on the dirty stuff there. This is awkward, and now a crossover. So Mostert having a huge crack. Chaz Mostert having a throw down the inside, and he's bowled a nice one down there to get the job done. So Mostert moves it up into third position. And Will Davison, meanwhile, back in the midfield at the moment, is going very, very quickly. But all of a sudden, great pace from Chaz Mostert. Now, meantime, Will Davison continues to climb through the field, and we're looking at the overhead here in a great exchange between Reynolds and Heimgartner, and it's ongoing as they make their run up towards Turn 3, and the Kiwi down the inside on the R&J batteries entry, and a bounce back by Reynolds up on the outside. Puts you on the wrong side of the road when you get to the left-hander down here, but he might sweep down. Does he get it done on the dirty side of the road? David Reynolds does. Well done. There's a lot of, there's a lot of radio chat between the two organisations about how hard respective teams were pushing at the start of the stint, the final stint here. James Courtney's made ground on Waters, hasn't he? He has, and Lee Holdsworth that's mixed into this is actually out of sequence. He's down in 22nd position at the moment. He's one lap off the money. Oh, Chaz Mostert. Mostert doing some rally work on the exit of turn six. So he's still pressing on pretty hard there at the moment. He's 8.3 off the lead. He's 4.9 from Anton. Cam's having to race him. There. And he's down in 22nd position, 1.1 1. Lap. 1 laps off the money from Van Gisbergen, whose margin's now at 3.6 seconds. To all teams, seconds. bad sportsmanship flag to car 10, disobeying blue flag light. OK, so Lee Holdsworth has now been warned on the race management channel from the race director in the background that the bad sportsmanship flag is being shown for ignoring the blue flag and a nice recovery from what could have been Control an absolute shocker. all teams, black flag, drive through penalty, car 10, disobeying black flags. James Taylor, our race director. That's a shot of James on the right-hand side of screen in Motorsport Australia, race control. They're black flagging, Lee, so there must be a comms issue. Some strange reason why he's, why he's not responding to the blue flags. It's the internal system this weekend. Yeah. So he's getting that on the dash, but at the but he's been obviously warned for it and then hasn't moved it away. And we as motorsport fans are hungry for some action if these guys can get it together and make these last seven laps lively. So we've got a 2.2 second margin and things have smartened up. Now, when you stop and think about that time that you spoke about, Mark, in a high 14, the best lap of the race for Di Pasquale was a 14.6. Yeah. So the variation between his peak speed and the speed that he just achieved on the last lap. He's lost a bit of ground there. Drive traction on Mostert. Don't know whether he's close enough. He's trying to force his way through, but he's run too deep. So that's what I was worried about with Cam Waters when he tried the same manoeuvre last time. Oh, Tim there having a little wry smile at the dive that James was trying to affect. 2.8 kilometres of racing to come on the streets of Townsville. Randall gets out of the way. Van Gisbergen is our leader. That's officially half a second and once again he glides it in on the rear Van Gisbergen. This means that Deep Pasquale is fully incentivised. He gets the best seat in the house to look at the back of the Commodore. And he is now so close that he could be a threat when they get to turn 11. Top left-hand side of your screen, James Courtney's been able to get by Mostert also. Here we go. This is where the Mustang has been so fast all weekend. He makes a bit of ground on Bear Gisbergen. 
But the next section of road is where Shane has been absolutely at his best. The car rides the bump so nicely, slides it over Boundary Street. The big bump, 180 kilometres an hour, up to 210 k. Can he dive it down the inside? He's got two more corners after this one. This is turn 11. Everybody sidestepping, and Di Pasquale gets so close. They're one corner from home. He has a sniff at the gap. Oh, they're going to hit, and he's turned him. He's turned him at the last corner. Unbelievable. Ben Gisberg has been turned around at the last corner by Di Pasquale, and he checks up. He checks up. He's going to give it back to him. No, he didn't let him redress. So he was going to redress, but he didn't let him. Shane stayed there and let him go by first, so he'll get a penalty as a consequence. They're playing the judicial game. Wow. What a conclusion. Well, it's pretty clear what's going to happen there. So what a conclusion. Tagged at the last corner. And then I thought that Anton was going to give it back. And then they all checked up and dribbled across the line. Meantime, Waters gets on the podium after a vigorous battle with Courtney. We saw that it was going to liven up at the control back end of the to race. All Here teams, we go. Here's the penalty. All teams, five second time penalty to car 11, driving infringement. James Taylor, race director, umpire, makes the call. Advice from the driving standards advisor. All good. All done. Almost puts it back to Waters. Yeah, that's deliberate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that just shows you how close it is. Look at this on the replay. He threw everything out at Di Pasquale. It was a do or die move. Bang! Gets him in the left rear corner. They would have locked eyes at that point in the cockpit of the car, and it would be a ferocious exchange. Bang! Get that into you. So around goes Shane. Right now, Di Pasquale's thinking, what do I do? Do I back it off and roll to the line? And then the confusion at the line, and in the end, the umpire sorted it out, and a good call. So they, here's, here's the interesting one. He goes to redress. Shane doesn't allow him to redress. So he purposely parks it behind him so that you do incur the penalty. There's been a bit of tension between these guys, and uh, it's been starting to brew in the recent past, but Van Gisbergen gets the job done. So we didn't get to call two from two across the line. So we're busy having heart failure based on what was going on, but Van Gisbergen gets a double dose of points here this weekend. 300-point weekend for him, and a monstrous burnout. Some of that would have been coming from his ears at the final corner. Yes, the reaction would have been pretty volatile as he was being rotated. But you've got to give it to Anton. You've got to have a major crack. He had an absolute crack at it. Everybody's been saying, offer up some fierce resistance. That's about as fierce as it gets. Yep. So Van Gisbergen gets the job done in the weirdest of conclusions in Townsville. Van Gisbergen, 4.4 seconds because of the penalty correction for Anton Di Pasquale. It didn't change what was going to happen further down the order, so they slotted him in with the penalty so that he was second. Waters in third, Courtney and beyond. So now the next page of competitors, Reynolds, Percat, actually decent recovery.